Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Elias. So spring is finally here in full force. I've gone on a couple picnics here already and the weather is just divine. And today's video is going to be an exciting one because I will be doing a full on reading vlog for one of my most, if not the most, anticipated book of 2021. Pretty sure you're all aware what book I'll be reading about, but it'll be about The Chosen and the Beautiful by Nevo. This is essentially a great Gatsby retelling, but make it Asian and make it queer. So we follow our main character who is rich, who has education, and she's also adopted. However, most important doors and opportunities are close to her because of racial prejudices and she feels like an exotic attraction to her peers. And here it says, but the world is full of wonders, infernal packs and dazzling illusions, lost ghosts and elemental mysteries. All paper is fire and Jordan can cut out the paper heart out of a man. She just has to learn how. I'm incredibly excited for this book. I have yet to read any of Nevo's work, but I can already see and feel how good this book will be. It's just something magical about it. This whole reading vlog will be non-spoilery because this book does come out in June, so just in a couple of months. However, that is not the only book I will be attempting to read for this vlog. So I was actually not even aware of this book existence until recently, actually. And when I first saw the cover and when I read the blurb, I just, I immediately got the goosies. So I had to read it immediately. So I was actually blessed enough and the author kindly sent me an arc of his book. This book is You've Reached Sam by Dustin Tao. So this one follows our main character Julie who is 17 and she has big plans for her life. She wants to move out of her small town with her boyfriend Sam, attend a college, and also spend the summer in Japan. However, Sam, her boyfriend, unexpectedly dies and everything changes. One day, desperate to hear his voice again, she calls Sam's cell phone just to hear his voicemail one last time. However, to her surprise, Sam picks up the phone. So this book is essentially, you know, all about grief and how one handles that. But what would you do if you had the second chance to say goodbye to a loved one? So I'm ready for all the feels of this book. I'm ready to cry, to get my heart broken, for all the tissues. I'm making it more of a priority to read The Chosen and the Beautiful first. And if I have time, if I have time in some shape or way or form to hopefully get to this book in some way or another, I think I'll be okay if I won't be able to finish this book for the reading vlog, just because this book also doesn't come out until the end of the year in November. Another factor why I'm so excited to read these books is because the authors are Vietnamese. I'm also Vietnamese, so I'm totally 100% fucking here for the representation. Altogether, in of itself, this will be a rather chill reading vlog. So sit back, relax, grab a snack, and speaking of snacks, I would like to thank today's video sponsor, Boksu. Boksu is a monthly snack box subscription service that delivers original assortments of premium Japanese snacks and tea pairings right to your door. One of the unique things about Boksu is that every month there's a different theme and every box is different, meaning every snack in the box is also different. It's essentially described as taking a gourmet journey through Japan itself. Also another fun fact is that every box shipped to the US is one, free, and two, straight from Japan. If you're a first time Boksu customer like me, you get the Seasons of Japan box, which is this box right here, which has snacks that you can taste per season. So I'm pretty excited and interested in trying some of these snacks. So I'm really glad that Boksu honors Japanese heritage by empowering artisanal makers, by partnering with them, and bringing all these different flavors and snacks and treats to all around the globe. Inside the box, there's also a culture guide that details each product's origin, ingredients, and even common allergens. So you can find out precisely what these snacks are made of and some fun, trivial, and information about them. So as you can see, there are so many snacks, Don Don Yaki, Erimame Sanbei, Matcha Chocolate Stick Cake. A few of the snacks I'm really excited to try out is their Mochi Puffs, as well as their Matcha Chocolate Stick Cake, and so many others. So like I said before, each box comes straight from Japan and it's free shipping to the US. So if you guys are interested, I do have a code and a link down below where you can get 10% off your very first box and save up to $47 to get your first authentic Japanese book suit box. So throughout the entirety of this reading vlog, I will be essentially reading Asian books written by Asian authors while eating Asian snacks. Thank you once again to Boksu for sponsoring today's video. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get straight into the books. I got so many questions, 
라는 말도 못한 채 Are you fine fine? 이런 말만 대문에 너가 잘 지내고 있는 거나 알아 그냥 그 목소리가 듣고 싶은 거를 어떻게 I say I miss you but 그건 나의 실수 Why is he kind of a babe? Oh my god. Right? You know I had a crush on him when I was younger? Really? <laughs> <laughs> I saw the commercial and I was like, hello. You know I had a crush on him when I was younger? Oh my god, I'm dead. <laughs> this is who you saw at the BART station? Yes. We're in love. Your, what is it? Your, your daily dose of ass for the day? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sing it out loud, love. No. <laughs> you're on camera, behind the scenes. Okay. Oh, now you're gonna know how inarticulate I am during this This is literally me. You know how I post bloopers at the end of my videos? <laughs> oh, <laughs> so yeah. incoherent. Hello everyone. So I just wanted to quickly update you guys on where I'm at with The Chosen and the Beautiful. I have about this much left in the book to go. That's like roughly three fourths of the way through. So far, um, this book, it's really interesting. There are a few things I really, really love about it and a few things not so much. Alrighty, one of the things that I love about this book is the writing. Evo's writing is just so intricate and personal, you can't just help but fall in love, especially with all the characters and the setting. And you can see the raw talent that she has. This book actually, in of itself, the more I read it, it's historical fiction. And Yivo's writing, she brings this really interesting aspect in this interesting take. This whimsical, fantastical element to the story that just really elevates everything that the story has to offer overall. So, so far has it really lived up to my expectation as the most anticipated read of 2021. I would say honestly, Yes, it has because I wasn't too sure what to expect initially. Like I thought, am I just getting a whole brand new retelling 
of a story of The Great Gatsby or am I getting something along the lines of The Great Gatsby? But honestly, this holds up really well on its own story. I would say, honestly, if you're not too familiar with the old classic in general and you're wondering if you should pick this book up or read The Great Gatsby first, I would actually recommend reading this because I think it would sort of add more of a mysterious element, especially if you don't know any of the backstory or information regarding The Great Gatsby. I love how this book is sort of unconventional in terms of storytelling as well. I think some of the main critiques that I have for this book is it can be confusing as to where you are in the book because this book does have flashbacks, uh, past and present, and it sort of interweaves those two together into a main linear story form of telling, I guess, if that makes any sense. There will be some parts in the book where we are present with some of these characters. While you're reading on, you suddenly find yourself being transported back, I don't know, sometimes 10 years, 5 years, a year, or a week, and you're just all of a sudden confused as to what actually happened like a couple paragraphs ago because you thought you were in this place during this time but actually the author was describing this era at this certain time so it was a little jarring and confusing to differentiate the two i think i would have been better prepared if the author easily distinguished the different um, time frames and different settings and all that i feel like if you have already read the great gatsby and you already know the general story there aren't honestly a lot of new things offered with this book rather it's more of a general outlook of how people of color are viewed and treated as such going to this book i thought i'll be reading you know something new maybe a new fresh take sort of on the great gatsby story there are some surprises here and there but they're rather small and far in between nothing too big or explosive but i don't think that's really the main takeaway the point of this book but yeah so that's generally it and all i have to say about this book so far Hello everyone, how's it going? So I have finally finished The Chosen and the Beautiful. I have thoughts, but before we get into my final review, I just want to quickly update you guys on the other book, You Reached Sam. So I have started this, I started it today. I am currently around 36 pages in, and I've only completed one chapter. But so far, the tone for this book is just so somber and moody and quiet and angsty and I'm here for it. And nothing too much to say so far. This will be the only update, I guess, for this book in the long run until hopefully a reading wrap-up since um, I'll end the vlog here after the review. But this book is literally less than 300 pages so I don't have any worries about finishing it or anything. I'm intrigued so far. Curious to see where it goes. So there's that. Okay, so The Chosen and the Beautiful. What are my thoughts? I did give sort of a short, succinct, contemplative review of my overall thoughts regarding the book. I believe I was like three-fourths of the way into it. Upon finishing it, most of my thoughts originally um, still stay the same. However, there are some things I want to dive a little deeper into. So in general, let's go over the things I really liked first. Again, the writing, I loved it. I'm not going to speak too much on it since I already spoke about it previously. It is just fantastic. Honestly, I would put Evo's writing, the atmosphere, the mood, the style, almost the same as Ocean Vuong's On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous or even Aaron Morgenstern's The Starless Sea and The Night Circus. It's just both equally magical and dazzling in of itself and it just really elevated the story and the characters for me. It was very creative, descriptive, and very flowing and flowery without it being too heavy-handed, which I really, really loved. Honestly, I recommend this book based on the writing alone. It's just that good. Secondly, the characters. Well, character, I should say. The only character which I really, truly cared about, Jordan Baker. I love the spin that Vo put on this character, how she made this character queer and Asian, and all the aspects that came with it, especially during the 1920s. So that was a really interesting shape overall, reading about this book during this time. And in this book, her character sort of retains the same integral character traits of the classic original, but even better because Nevo takes this character and just makes her more personable. So the third aspect I really loved about this book is that almost every single character in here is queer and I loved it. Don't get me wrong, there were some instances where, you know, racism, homophobia, and xenophobia reared its ugly head. The fourth and the final thing I loved about this book that I can honestly compare to The Night Circus was Gatsby's Parties. Obviously, you couldn't have gone through this book without entering one of Gatsby's parties 
And let me tell you, I truly wish I was there to experience all the magic, the food, the sights, the people, everything was just dazzling and just wonderful. It honestly really reminded me of just the wonder, the whimsical aspect from Aaron Morgenstern's books, especially The Night Circus. Speaking of the magic system, I feel like people will be sort of divided on this whole book in general, not even regarding the writing of the characters. I feel like a lot of people would either be confused or put off by the magic system in this book because I feel like the magic incorporated in this book was just, was almost to a point normalized in a way where people didn't really bat an eye, where people sort of expected or was okay with seeing wonder or enchantments or different creatures and different things that you normally might not see on a regular day-to-day -day basis. I was okay with the magic not being really explained in the book, the magic process, the system, how people were able to do things or see things the way that they can. And also Jordan's ability to cut paper and bring it to life was so cool. My only critique about that was that I wished it was more explored and just expanded upon because I thought it was such a cool aspect regarding her story, but we never really dived into it or really explored the ability that she has. So aside from all the pros, let's get into the cons. I feel like in of itself, if you're looking for something new, sort of like a fresh spin twist on the story of The Great Gatsby, you probably won't find anything new regarding that in this book. At its core, I feel like even though we're told this perspective, this story from a queer Asian American character, I feel like the majority of the story is just all about Gatsby and Daisy and their love for each other, and how Jordan is essentially just caught in between these two characters and their love for each other. I did find that there were some plot points in this book that I wished, I truly wish Nii just dived right into it and just even diverted from the original core story of The Great Gatsby. I can see this book in those aspects being a bit underwhelming. And going back to some of those plot points, the twists and everything, there wasn't essentially a big build-up for them. It just sort of slowly happened, there and done, and that was it. And the ending was extremely rushed. I felt like we could have done an extra maybe 10 to 15 pages regarding the ending, the conclusion of this book. For like the last 10 to 15 percent of this book, I felt like we were on the brink of a precipice on something really new that we could have explored, but we didn't really go there and the story just sort of ended. But overall, bottom line, I feel like this book did live up to some aspects of my anticipation. While I was still sort of underwhelmed with some of the core aspects the book had to offer, I still truly enjoyed the story and the characters and the writing. I know I said earlier that I would recommend this book over The Great Gatsby, but after reading and finishing this one, I feel like I would recommend both. Especially with this book, it's just a really fun, interesting perspective and take on the original story overall. Oh, another core aspect I want to talk about was Jordan's sort of identity and internalization, trying to find that root of seeing someone that looks like her, reminding of herself of who she is and where she's from. I feel like people of color can relate internalizing a lot of things because growing up, especially for me personally, growing up homeschooled in a predominantly white setting, especially going to a college in the Midwest where I was one of the few people of color there, it was really interesting to me how I could relate to a lot of Jordan's aspects of her outlook on fitting in. Even though she had an education, she had wealth, and she had some semblance of power, there were a lot of doors and opportunities that were still close to her. Even though she was still in this elite, wealthy setting, she still had to go lengths to fit in and sort of mold herself to fit with these people's viewpoints of the world and how they view people of color in general. And I wish that played a bigger part in the book. I wouldn't have minded at all if Ni diverted from the whole Gatsby story in general and just taking some elements and aspects of the original story in this book. So that is essentially my overall non-spoiler thoughts on this book in general. I was originally going to give this book a 3.75 out of 5 but I'm just gonna bump it up to a four because it was just honestly really good in general. But overall, I just wish some elements and aspects were just further explored upon. But that's essentially it. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will see you guys all soon with the new video. It's essentially described, it's essentially the feeling, it's, a, it's, a, it's essentially described the feeling of, it's essentially, it's essentially, it's essentially the journey no, what do I say this? It's essentially a journey. <clears throat> it's essentially... I felt like I felt I felt as if I felt as if I felt as if we were